Hey everybody, what's up? Free goat, free goat. Welcome to Macho Wrestling 101. This is another WrestleMania anthology review. Today we're looking at WrestleMania 20 from the sold out Madison Square Garden in New York City. Uh, March 14th, 2004. Over 20,000 fans there, and I believe the front row seats were some something around five grand. I want to say. I remember the front row tickets for this WrestleMania were just off the charts. Um, the revenue they made was 2.4 million in ticket sales. When you consider from, from the gate, when you consider that only 20,000 people came and they make 2.4 million, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, that's not counting pay-per-view buys and everything else. Uh, the Big Show and John Cena opened the event for the U.S. title. Uh, before I get going, actually, let me just plug my channel. Uh, I'm, I'm loving doing WrestleMania reviews, but we also can, can stick up to date, stay up to date with Raws and SmackDowns and other pay-per-views. So hit like and subscribe if you like this channel. Uh, it would definitely help me out, and I would appreciate it. Uh, now that I've said that, let's get back to the review. The Big Show defends his title against John Cena, the U.S. title, and uh, this is your typical heel beats big, big man beats down little man. Uh, with it's very slow and it's it's it's, it's the how can the underdog survive? David vs. Goliath, uh, Hogan Andre WrestleMania three type story, where uh, there's some bear hugs and there's some. It's all about big man versus little man, but then John Cena gets abundance of strength. He uh, gets his brass knucks to a good pop. Uh, they were hidden by the turnbuckle and then a chain shot. And then he actually has the strength to FU, which is attitude adjustment to Big Show. And at 9.14, Cena becomes the new U.S. champion. I give it two and a half stars. Decent opener, but it was very formulaic. Next up. We got Rob Van Dam and Booker T defending the tag team titles in a fatal four-way, one-fall overtime style here versus the Dudley Boys versus Garrison Kane and Mark Jindrak and versus La Resistance. That's Rene Dupuis and Rod Conway. Uh, Rob Van Dam and Booker T were over, but they didn't get the greatest pop coming out. Uh, they did retain the titles, though, after a frog splash to Conway as Booker T and RVD retained. The match was solid enough, but it was all it was pretty scattered around. It, it seemed like a clusterfuck, just trying to get all these teams in, not really get telling a tag team story. So I just give it a star and three quarters. Next up, we had a great match between Christian and Chris Jericho. Trish was the X factor in the match on the outside. Uh, I didn't see her heel turn coming. Uh, I don't think many people did actually, because Jericho was the Jericho was the slug. Uh, in, in this whole thing with Trish, but Jericho ends up being the babyface, and then duoed by Trish and Christian, who joined forces. Um, Trish Stratus ran to the ring after a lot of after a lot of contact by Jericho and Christian, who slugged it out in the middle of the ring. Christian with the front face lock drops Jericho with a big DDT. Chris Jericho kicks out. Christian's frustrated. Christian grabbed Trish by the apron and shoved her to the corner. Trish elbowed Jericho accidentally as she didn't know who she had hit turned around accidentally. Christian used it to his advantage and rolled up Jericho for the three. At 1452, Christian scored the biggest win of his career by defeating Jericho with Trish's help. After the match, Trish Stratus slapped Jericho and joined sides with Christian, giving him a kiss at the top of the ramp and uh, turning into a bigger heel. Uh, probably Christian's best, uh, biggest victory as on a singles match. Uh, four stars, I rated it. Evolution, Randy Orton, Batista, and Ric Flair versus the Rock and Saw Connection in a two-on-three tag team match. Orton delivered a great promo before this match. Uh, the, the one with Flair and Batista where they were at the stair steps where they threw Mick Foley down on a Raw six months before this. Uh, where they showed the clip of that, and then they went to the same stairs. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a nice touch. Really good, really good promo, and the match was great. Uh, Rock didn't seem like he missed a step. Foley did. It was Foley was Foley. Uh, Orton, Batista, and Flair all went out of their way to make this a memorable match. Uh, Foley got the hot tag eventually, and it dropped everybody in Evolution. It was just Foley and Orton. 
he hit fully hits his double arm DDT and uh, and and then Batista interrupted it and he knocked him off the, the apron he, this allowed Orton to regroup Sacco was about to be slapped in on Orton but out of nowhere Orton hit the RKO on Foley in midair nice so in the end at 17.03 Orton, Batista and Flair were declared the winners after Orton's RKO did Foley in Evolution did need the rub and they got it by Rock and Foley uh, two, I, I give that three stars and a quarter that was definitely a great tag team match. Uh, a little bit didn't look out of place, but it was uh, it was something different, you know. And a good promo from The Rock and Foley before the match. I should mention that. Tori Wilson and Sable versus Stacy Keebler and Miss Jackie in the Playboy Evening Gown match. Wow, let's sit down for uh, Flair and Steamboat. Let's let's get ready for this one. Uh, Michael Coe's oh Michael Coe's oh my is the most annoying thing from this match. The, the the gals look nice though, so we'll give her a quarter of a star. Next up, Chavo Guerrero with Chavo Senior defended the title against Ultimo Dragon, Shannon Moore, Jamie Noble, Funaki, Nunzio, Billy Kidman, Rey Mysterio, Tajiri, and Akio. Uh, Ultimo Dragon trips up in 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 his entrance to this match. Uh, the anthology, I don't think, uh, includes that, though. Uh, this match couldn't really tell a story. A lot like the tag matches, it was just a lot of people everywhere, and it didn't have time to settle down. Uh, Ray can't springboard because the official is elected to keep him away from Ch Travel Sr., but he ends up uh, he ends up with a senton to Travel Classic, which made the fans happy. Mysterio speared Travel with a sunset flip. He got it, Travel rolled out, and covered Ray. Meanwhile, he used Chavo Sr.'s arm for leverage, so Chavo steals the win in order to retain it. 1028. Uh, the Cruiserweight title. So uh, he screwed Ray with help from Chavo Guerrero Sr. So I give that match two stars. Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar is next, with Austin as the referee. What do you say about this match? What do you say? The, the following chance took place. Na 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 na. Na 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 na, hey hey hey, goodbye, Austin, Austin, Austin. We want Brett, we want Brett, Hogan, Hogan. You sold out, you sold out. Boring. This match sucks. Etc. Um, I can see what Lesnar and, and Goldberg were planning to do. The the big tie up and neither man get it, get its advantage that happened in, in in other matches like this that happened with warrior and hogan it happened with and, and it, it didn't seem bad then but the reason it was bad here is because both guys got their shit pushed in by the Madison square garden crowd uh, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hoping not to get too graphic there but they got their shit pushed in literally by the fucking msg crowd they literally fucked both guys up Confidence wise, Lesnar didn't care. Goldberg didn't care. He wanted to just get out of there. So they, I don't know if they purposely had a bad match, but they did not look happy. They just wanted to get their WrestleMania payday and get out of the door. Uh, I think the fans were genuinely hurt by Lesnar because they put, the company put so much stock in Lesnar. I know as a fan back then, I was pissed because. I remember fucking loving Brock Lesnar. I mean, like, he was one of the best. Him and Kurt Angle were two of the best newcomers. And, and Kurt Angle has his neck problems. So, so uh, you know, guys like Brock and Eddie, they don't come around. Brock and uh, Angle, they don't come around very often. So when and the company gives so much titles and so much praise, and Lesnar headlined his first WrestleMania and won the WWE title. He beat The Rock four months into his run. He beat Hogan five months into it. He was going to beat Austin if he didn't walk out. So Lesnar was beating everybody. They put so much time into it, and then and he goes to do the NFL thing. It didn't work out, obviously, and then he went into the something that did work out, mixed martial arts. But the thing is, is it's the point. The point is, we all wanted Lesnar to stay, and I think the fans were a little bit hurt. Uh, I was. So they really wanted to say fuck you to him. And uh, Lesnar, I really think he'd echo the fuck you back. But that's a long time ago. Time heals wounds. Lesnar came back. Fans were happy as shit. 
and so on. But at this time, yeah, the fans weren't happy. I gave this match three quarters of a star for the chance. Goldberg won with a spear. Austin stunned both their asses out of the WWE, which is probably where I actually got three quarters of the star to give it. Rikishi and Scotty Tuhati defended the tag titles for the SmackDown brand against the world's greatest tag team, the APA and the Basham Brothers. Uh, so the two cool retains the titles here at 601, but they do a dance after. Rewatch Royal Rumble 2000 when Too Cool does the dance, and rewatch the, the crowd react to this Too Cool dance. Ask them if it's something is four years older than it should be. It was really out of style. They give the tag match one one star. Victoria defended the women's title against Molly Holly in a hair versus hair title hair versus title match. Uh, Victoria won at 4.53, so Molly had to have her shed shaved bald. This match was okay in parts, but it really wasn't as good as they could do, and the crowd was dead. i give them a star and a half. Next up, we had Eddie Guerrero defend the, the WWE title versus Kurt Angle. Uh, we know Angle's bad neck. We knew Angle wasn't going to wrestle much after this, so Eddie winning was pretty, uh, pretty sure, but... This match is a fucking goddamn no. Sorry for my language if you're if you're religious, but what a fucking classic! What a fucking classic! This match gets better with every watch. I just did a review on it that I'm gonna post on my channel in another few days. I, I have some matches of the day that I've filmed for other days coming up, and that is one of them. And I talk about the chain wrestling. I talk about the amateur wrestling. I talk about the counter wrestling. And I talk about their standing switches and their takedowns, and just everything they did was so it was on the money, and the psychology was brilliant. I gave it four stars and three quarters. Uh, it's actually now in my top thirty matches of all time. So uh, Eddie, at the end, Eddie Guerrero, uh, his rib cage was getting worked on the entire match, and then his legs. So what Eddie? What Eddie did is he faked a foot injury. He untied his boot, and then when Angle went to grab the boot, the boot came off, and Eddie caught him by surprise and did a small package for the victory. Live cheating and stealing to the win. That was just a clever ending to what was already a masterpiece. That match, honest to God, gets better on each viewing. It might even be better than the main event. I don't know if it's better than the main event because I didn't rate it as high as the main event, but it's it's up there. These two matches make the show. Next, we had the return of The Undertaker versus Kane. The, the match was nothing versus Kane. The match really sucked, but just getting the dead man back, I, I'll give it a star and three quarters for that. The Undertaker put Kane away at 745. Paul Bear and Undertaker both returned, so that was good. Uh, they didn't bring back the zombie Undertaker like we wa like we wanted, but you can't have everything. And uh, Taker did bring back some of his, you know, his longer hair once he grew it out, the makeup a little bit during later years. So can't complain about everything. It was just good to see him back and still stay undefeated. In 12, in the main event, we had Triple H defending the world title against the Royal Rumble winner, Benoit, and Shawn Michaels because Shawn Michaels wants this story to be not over or over with Triple H, so that's why he got it in the main event. And, oh yeah, he super kicked Benoit and signed the contract by himself. I, I guess every wrestler should do that. Um, fans chanted, let's go Benoit. Shawn and Triple H bladed like hell. Uh... This was great booking. Whenever there was two, three guys in there, they always made sure that the young, the other guy was out and the two guys would just chop the hell out of each other. Benoit was suplexed from one table to the next. It broke after Triple H and Shawn Michaels double teamed in there. Uh, so many suplexes in this match. So many back body drops. Michaels did a, uh, a, a, moons, a moonsault from the top rope onto Benoit and Triple H. Benoit was taken out of it. Michaels went to hit the ch sweet shit music on Benoit when he had Triple H in a cross face, so Benoit looked out of it. But then Michaels went to hit another sweet shit music, and Benoit elevated him to the outside. Triple H turned him around for the pedigree, and then Benoit crowned that into a cross face, and he held the cross face for about a minute, and Triple H rolled out, but then he snapped it right back on in mid-ring. 
and Benoit won at 24 47 as Triple H tapped out. And Jim Ross did a great job on commentary. Chris Benoit did a great job on the match. Everyone did a good job to Blade and just put him over to Triple H and Shawn Michaels. I rate this match five stars. It's in my top 13 matches. Um, so this match and the Eddie match make this show ultimately worth it. I, I got to give this show a six out of a 6.5 out of 10 for those two matches alone. Um... Well, no, not 6.5 for that alone. 6.5 for that with the Evolution tag, with the Jericho Christian match, with Undertaker coming back, with uh, the whole, it, it all begins again. You know, John Cena wins the U.S. title. It, it was, it had some moments in it, but it had bad moments too, and we can't overlook that. Uh, it had giant expectations. WrestleMania 20, when you build an event where it all begins again, and they promoted the hell out of this event. They had a WrestleMania sign in every single Raw for like a year. Um, yeah, so ultimately it ends with Confetti and Benoit and Eddie hugging in the ring. A memory that's taken away now, unfortunately. But we as fans can still go back and watch it and uh, have a happy ending instead of the real life bullshit that we have to endure. Nonetheless, it goes off on a good note. So that's where I rate the WrestleMania 26.5 out of 10. I'll be back with my WrestleMania reviews. I'm going to cut them in half from here on out. From 19 to 39, I'm going to cut them one part and then a second part. So my uh, so my events don't go 20 minutes. So my tapes don't go 20 minutes long like this one. This one's going to go 17 minutes. So that's why I did, I'm doing a part one and part two now. For the first half of the card and the second half. Thanks for uh, listening. Le hit like and subscribe to my video. This is WrestleMania 20, and I'm Brett Mix from Macho Wrestling 101, and I'm out.